Hello and welcome to Top of the World. Today we're going to be doing something quite different and the weather has led me to do something I wouldn't normally do and I don't particularly like doing but we have so to do it. So I'm in a piece of a forest where we haven't cut for th maybe four years. I've still got some trees tagged but we haven't cut here for a while and I've got to take down out of around 750 trees around 30 of the biggest nicest prime trees so that I can get a good three cants out of them and lots of timber and and the other problem I've got is I can't get the tractor and the forest crane here right now so we are literally picking the trees measuring the trees and I'm going to measure them so that I can calculate how much timber under bark each one contains then I know what the value of that timber is and I'm literally laying them down. Unlike our normal where we're thinning and we're looking for the weak and the damage today, we're looking for the biggest and the strongest and we're just laying them down. We're not cleaning them up, we're not cutting them to length, we're just laying them on the floor because I basically have to do the rest of my cutting within the next five to six days. Everything I need to cut needs to come down. And the reason for that being is as trees start to draw sap, I'm done for. I air dry. I can air dry the boards and, and all the cut timber in two years, cants in three years. If they're full of sap, I'm into a three to four year drying period. I can't do that. I've got value of timber then sat in the yard, which I can't do anything with. Or I'm building with green timber and you don't really want to do that. So let's find the biggest and strongest, calculate their size and then lay them down. We're going to lay it inbound and the reason for that is my next target tree is this one here. We're also going to lay that inbound. Now I don't want to teach some of you to suck eggs about exposing a forest when you're cutting like this. So this is a small piece of forest. The outside of it was clear cut about 15 years ago. And I can tell from the stumps, the trees that were clear cut are considerably bigger than this section, which is why it was left. And I believe this section here was cut 70, 70 years ago because it was an easy section to get to and the, the gradient around it wasn't. So I believe the middle of this was cut 70 years ago and replanted and the outside was much older. Looking at some of the stumps, they were 100 plus years. So this is our first target tree here. Our second target tree is there. We're going to lay them parallel through there because from the other side we can get in with the tractor and trailer. You'll also notice there's a secondary forest right coming through. When we're laying these down, we want to do our best not to take anything. There's some in here that are 15 to 20 years. Right? We don't want to damage those because that's the secondary forest coming up and that's coming up all the time. If you were clear cut, and obviously all of that would get destroyed and then you would need to replant. Well, if we leave the secondary forest coming up, we don't need to replant and we're already years ahead. That's my theory. Right. So, first two, this one, and then that one, and we're gonna lay them down through there, avoiding this and this. All right, because there's like 15 years growth, 20 years growth on both of those, 15 to 20 years.
I wasn't going to take this tree, but while I'm looking up to see how good it is, right, you can see it's diseased, damaged there. And then if you look at the tree above, it's dying and fast. That actually ain't very good past about 20 feet, but it's, it's dying anyway. Right, well, I might as well take that as well. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, we'll have that out, because otherwise we'll be back here in two years' time taking out a dead tree, which is no good, so. So now what we'll do is we'll measure those up, enter them into a log, so I know. So we've moved up, it's quite dense down there, but there's a quite a large open area here. I haven't taken anything out there, it's just always been like it. So what we can't do is take any trees out of this area to open it up even more. The other interesting thing about this, despite it being open, there's not a lot of growth there. Does that tell me something about the patch of ground right there? Possibly, possibly, I don't know. Anyway, coffee, log what we've cut. We've talked about uh, mammals coming to feed off the top of the trees, the moose and the reindeer many times. I've arrived here this morning, ready to cut. And we are, we're pretty frozen up. And, uh, that is a herd of reindeer, just slowly moving off. Just having a gentle stroll down there, they've been They've been here feeding. They're not too worried about humans or snowmobiles because that's how the Sami round them up and uh, get them moving and collect them. And uh, there's only reindeer. The reindeer won't mix with the moose. So we're all good. And reindeer pose no threat at all. In fact, they're, well, they're nice friendly animals. Right, so we're much colder again this morning, which is nice because the snowpack will be a bit harder, especially as uh, on this side, where we're going to be going. Um, I think we're a good three to four feet deep on this side. Um, and the later we get through winter, you know, you can go through with the snowshoes. So we'll see how deep it is. But uh, yeah, it's much colder this morning. Much, much colder this morning. Very different day today. So I got out here really early this morning and uh, the cold immediately killed the batteries. So filming was almost over before it started because it was so cold this morning, which is good. Because as you probably noticed, well, you can hear I'm walking around without any snowshoes. Not only am I walking on the track without any snowshoes. I can walk over the surface of the snow without snowshoes. Gently, I grab you. That's how hard frozen it is. 
24 hours make such a difference. Have I got a hang up? Yeah, see that? Couldn't quite see what I was doing and uh, cut the hinge a bit thin and she slid off sideways. Anyway, am I gonna try and pull and fight that? No, I'm not. <coughs> Should I really let away? Should I really leave that like that? No, not really, but I'm gonna to do today. Just because, oh, we've done uh, seven hours and I am bushwhacked. So, what I've done, because it's such a beautiful day, it's still well, well below freezing point, we've brought the boy out. And he's having a whale of a time. He's not doing anything useful, he's just showing off. Where is it? Where is it? So I have managed to get a few more down today. Well, quite a few more down today. But I finished just after lunch. So uh, none of them have got any markings on. I'm gonna come back and... I'm gonna come back and measure them and mark them up. I should have done it while I was cutting really, but I was so over the moon that I could actually cut without uh, snowshoes today. <laughs> so nice. So nice to be able to walk about without those things on. Anyway, I did put them on first thing and I realised I weren't breaking through the snow. And I was like, hmm, maybe we can walk around without these. Anyway, so we're parked up there. We do have the chainsaw and the snowshoes in the back, but it was really just to come and enjoy a cup of coffee and to bring Casper out on such a beautiful afternoon. I don't know how much below freezing we are but I've got no gloves on so but then <coughs> it was so cold this morning I had trouble getting going uh, you weird temperatures it's too cold for the full suit uh, it's too warm for the full suit and then just to come out in a jacket and my ovies with all my layers underneath was too cold but so you have to get going but once you're going you warm up and then you can start de-layering de but you see it's bubbling right across the top of that that's a good three or four feet deep there. And we've lost a good 50% of our snow level. Because of this weird warm period, but it's all frozen so hard now, you can walk right the way across the top of it. Well, the reindeer and the moose are not. They're still sticking to the trail, but me and Casper can. This. What a beautiful afternoon. We could tell what time it is because of where the sun is. So it's nice to be able to sit in the sun. Firstly, without all the clothing on and without any gloves. This time of year, you've missed the sun so, so much. But, um, see, I've just sat down. It's not warm, but it feels warm because it's not cold. Boy, here he comes. Did you find it? Good boy. Good boy. Where did you go? Down back to see how far it was. Another coffee break. Another location, different coat. My old faithful coat, the zipper finally gave up. Anyway, am I sitting here having coffee in a snowstorm? There I am, am I cold? No, I'm not cold. 
pretty rough out today, I've got to say. Anyway, this was a huge pile of tops that um, it was getting too big and I was having a throw too high and it, it just seems pointless to me, so set fire to it. There we go. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that's going to be our day because now the wind's got up as well. And um, yeah, <clears throat> too much snow, too much wind, and I've been at it for too much, too long. And the, the mornings are getting lighter and the nights are getting lighter. And um, we're already at from no daylight. Where are we now? End of end of uh, end of March. I mean, it's 27th, 28th, 29th today, 29th, something like that. So, eight weeks ago, we was in darkness, and now we've got 13, 14 hours of daylight. Well, that means I wake up at 5 a.m. because I don't know. Anyway, so we started out here at six. I well, we think it's now about 1,400, 1,500 hours. That'll do. All right, that's nine hours. That's more than enough. Anyway, that's my pile of tops gone. Now I won't have to be throwing the tops so high. And, and I know about the tops. You know, we, we keep a lot of the tops, but there's some tops that you can't keep. And um, there you go, side branches, whatever they are. So that's been burning. I well, think I lit that at 10 o'clock this morning. And I filled it up twice because I've been scavenging around my other piles. There's one place above all else I hate going to because three times out of the four I go there, I fall off, I get stuck, it's a load of effort. And anyway, so the property owner is short of firewood. Well, there's firewood over there. And uh, we've had a lot of snow and I thought I'd just pop over there and just have a quick look, see if it is worth dropping a load of firewood and dragging it out. <coughs> so, I've come down here and you can see how fresh the snow is, right? And I've got to cross this kind of landscape and I've come around the corner here and as always, 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 it's dropped into a hole. Now I've been trying to get this out for an hour and a half. I've got straps, the straps, and we're going from that tree there, so there it won't come out backwards. I've just gone from that tree there and pulled it over onto its side and dug it out underneath and it won't. All right, now there's, there's a big problem aiding this problem. And that problem is, as some of you know, I'm running the track carpet belt loose because it's stapled together because it's broken. Which means if you put it under pressure, it actually just skips on the front cog, so you've got to be real gentle with it, otherwise you'll just tear it apart, and if that tears apart in that hole, that's where it stays. All right, that's, that's just that. So I've had enough now, because that has to be dug out properly. I can't, I can't do it anymore. I've got to dig it out from the back, and then I've got to dig it out from the front, and I've got to ride it out. Have I got a shovel on board? Well, <clears throat> almost always, 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 in my sled, my tool sled that I take everywhere with me, I've got two shovels, yeah. Did I put any in the back this morning because I'm just gonna go and ride the trails and break them down? No, I didn't. No, I have got a chainsaw. All right, so I have fashioned a big stick there and put it under immense strain and trying to lift it. The problem with this, this particular sled, it's not like most other snowmobiles, they're so light you can just roll them over. All right, even roll them over again out the side. I know how to do all of that. There's two issues with that. One, I'm a lot older than I was. And I've got a lame shoulder, and that, you can't roll nowhere. That is heavy. That's the heaviest snowmobile in the world. Anyway, that's my rant done, is it? Because all of those things are all right, but what a beautiful day. Just not a day to be digging in the snow. Anyway, now I've got to walk back. I've got to walk back, I've got to take coffee, calm down. Am I at risk out here? Have I got any weapons? No. I'm not a risk and I haven't got any weapons. Only from the moose, right? And it's just not, there's not even any tracks. Anyway, I'm gonna walk back 
get some shovels, come back and have the long dig so I can just ride it out. <sighs> what an idiot. Why did that happen? Right, well, you can probably see tops of raspberry plants. What happens in the first snow? Because this is not trees, this is all crap. <clears throat> These big mounds, you see, there's nothing underneath them except big clumps of... Anyway, the snow builds up over the top of them, right, leaving big cavities. And then when you get that warming period, when the warming period comes, it destabilises the snow. You ride across it and it just falls into a hole. Could I have ridden it out of there if I'd got the proper belt on it that's not stitched together with metal staples and tensioned right, yeah. But what happens was, as soon as I put it under any pressure, it started to slip on the front cog and it's jerking away and just punched through a big hole. So there's nothing underneath that, that's the problem. Is the belt is just... <laughs> Beautiful, lovely, look at the day. Beautiful, what am I complaining about? That, that's a lot of hard work that is. Right, snowshoes on, and we'll go back that way. Should have known better. The sun's over here. That means it's around 7 a.m. Current temperatures, minus 16 degrees Celsius. Did it reach minus 20 overnight? Yep. And what a difference that makes, because I've just walked here, yes, I'm back in the same place, without snowshoes. There's my snowshoes down there. Well, I know, I know, I know. Right? I know many things, and I know how to cross this area, and I didn't. For years I've walked this area, and I've snowshoed in a trail before I ride the snowmobile. For some reason, yesterday, mid-afternoon, after it had been warming up all day, I assumed, for some reason, I was going to dig this huge hole, which I have, and just ride it out. What an idiot. What an absolute idiot. Well, here's the big hole we dug. That is the huge hole we dug. And that is how far I got. What an idiot. What an absolute idiot. So yesterday when we was here, the sun's over there. This morning, it's only just risen. I know it looks quite high, but it has only just risen. Right, it is exceedingly cold. We are gonna use that big stump over there and some more straps that I've brought with me. We're going to pull it up onto the top and we're going to snowshoe a path over there and we're going to ride that out of here this morning. Assuming it will start. Assuming it will start. Right. Okay, it's really cold. It's going to kill my battery. So I'm going to go and rig up first and then uh, you can join me in a minute. Okay, I'm connected up there. That's under a lot of tension, that strap. I can't put any more tension on that. Snowmobile's not moving. Why? Because it's frozen in the ground. So here we go. We start to dig another one of these colossal holes. And I tried to start it. No, I did start it. Let's get away from the sun. I started it to get it warmed up and it won't run. I mean, it'll run a little bit and then it stops. And uh, then the uh, by the dashboard, all the exhaust is coming out. So that means the exhaust can't exit the exhaust. So we dig a big hole and all of this in here, this is all frozen solid. All of this, where we missed it up, all of this has to be cleaned out. All the way through the track. So I've started underneath there, but I've got to clean the whole lot out, otherwise it will never move. So, first of these to get it unfrozen from the ground and see if it will pull up a little bit, but failing that, I'll just have to stay in this hole. And I've started on the other side too. You can see, well how big that hole. Simon, well, let me get back up here. It's going to be the same size as that one over there. That. Got no choice, I've got to dig it out and then it'll pull up, probably. Oh. Hole number one. Hole number two. And I've got it up on the top. I've also walked my route out this time. Oy! I've cleaned underneath, so I've got it running. And I've walked my route out. Now normally, I've got a lot of new subscribers. Normally I would walk this like this. I'd leave this for 24, 48 hours, it'll freeze solid. 
So why don't you do that, Simon? Well, I've already lost a day. The days, I can't keep losing days to my own stupidity, and this one, I shouldn't even be here. Right, that's where I was heading, over there. Right. And I have got a trail. I have got a trail, goes in loops all the way around. Because there's been so much snow, I lost my trail and ended up... Anyway, so once I get this going, I'm gonna to have to do something I don't like doing and that's ride that flat out. <laughs> so, well, I'll set you up so you can see the disaster or the success. Hopefully there's some battery left by the time I'll get back. But I'm just, I'm just going through those trees and I've got a track running through in the middle of that. Anyway, we'll see how this goes. complete rubbish not even you see the not even close have I got it on a trail <laughs> yeah would have made some really exciting riding if I'd have taken you with me I'll just uh, gather up the bits and then we can walk back I'll show you the, the route I don't suppose you even saw it anyway that's that's my trail running that way first thing that happens is punches a big hole there anyway and then go that way and I ended up going through the trees oh I missed everything I don't know but I was quite determined that I wasn't going to dig it out again and don't get me wrong I know snowmobiling is about going places you can't go crashing them, digging them out, riding them fast. I know all of that. I'm old-ish, quite old, reasonably old. Anyway, I'm getting there, but I've got a lot of broken things. And uh, I'd rather be cutting down trees and digging out snowmobiles, since that's supposed to be what I'm doing. Right. Have we got all of that, all of that weight? Okay. I've got a feeling I'm gonna drop some stuff, so. Uh, I wanted to go over there as lightly as I could, but ultimately that means I've got to carry this up. And that's generally not going well, and carrying the camera. Oh, my shoulder's killing me. All right. Oh. So you can see the size of the holes it was punching in that soft snow. Shouldn't have come out here. Look at that. I'm amazed I managed to make it really. I had to keep the swattle on and kind of go where it took me. And the sun's moved quite a bit. It already seems to be getting soft. Now I'm good on my, my pack down trails generally until lunchtime. Right, so that's where I should have gone, through there. And I've gone through there. It don't matter, because we arrived at the same place. Actually, quite a bit sooner than I expected, because I was concentrating on not eating anything as I went through there. See, I did have a trail around the outside, but this last lot of snow, I have said plenty of times before, if I don't regularly ride my trails, they can disappear. And then I end up doing this malarkey. Right, here's my main, my main highway. I know it don't look like it because of the amount of snow we've had, but I can assure you that is. And there we go. Put 
this lot just in here like this because we'll take it out when we get back put it in the shop he'll heat up and I can wind them all back up properly I bought coffee today mm. it ain't warm anymore Well, probably that's probably taking a couple of hours looking at where the sun is i'd say that was still before 0800 maybe 0900 anyway i can go back now warm up change my boots because they've all got snow in them and then we'll get the chainsaw ready and then we can get back to cutting and they will only have a few hours today because then lunch time will come so and we have done some cutting through here but nowhere near enough right we're not going over the other side of the valley though, right? I said some bad things about my snowmobile last night, yes I did. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't, didn't mean all of them. I did, oh, no I didn't mean all of them. Um, anyway, right, let's get back. Today's my last day cutting on this property. That's all the firewood for my neighbor, some firewood for me. And the whole place cleaned up just got to burn a few poles of tops and then we're back off over the valley to continue cutting the big stuff and we haven't been there for a couple of weeks because the weather's just been wild anyway we've been plunged back into winter and uh, now i can see what i think is the end of winter we need to go and cut the big stuff enjoy the fire was uh, Thomas's wife, uh, Thomas who passed in November. This is her land, she's a landowner, she likes to come out here and play with fire. So I have to supervise her because uh, anyway we won't talk about her setting the forest on fire one year. So this fire now marks my last day of firewood for Peggy, for, for myself, for this property, finished. Um, I've got some small piles left to burn and now we're gonna move across the valley and start taking down the last of the big stuff. We've only got a few days left before we lose the ability to be able to travel over the top of the snow. Um, I can see the end of winter coming. I can see over the next couple of weeks. The river's already broken up, so we've already had break up on the river, um, but I can see over the next couple of weeks we're gonna lose our snowpack and any means of traveling for a short period of time. Now, when I say I can see the end of winter coming, <coughs> I don't mean to say that is the end of winter. Obviously it isn't. I can just see, well, you can't see over on the river too much. There is, uh, I'll tell you what, on the way back, We'll stop by the bridge, I'll show you how much open water there is. Anyway, so I just thought I would uh, just add that in in case you thought that, uh, you know, April is the, is the end of winter. No, you can quite clearly see we're a long way from the end of winter. I 
That's Casper keeping an eye out for Ellie. Ellie? Where's Ellie? Where is Ellie? Can you see him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we might be lucky, we might see Ellie. That's a uh, moose. Tops there, nice bit of thinning, nice job. Look at that, lovely. Somebody's been through here thinning. see any open water there at all but we'll be back to the bridge in a minute where we'll see open water they are nasty old ruts that's the old log lorries and we can see open water here there's open water flowing that way up to the railway bridge and um, it's not open very far you see where it meets the island there there's not a lot of open water in, in, in all honesty not at all and absolutely no chance of getting the fishing boat out any of this month but there is open water looks a bit bleak out there is it cold yes it is a little bit of open water so not break up really then. And you'll see what I mean about getting the boat out in a minute. We were beginning of April, first week of April, and um, see how much ice there is between us and any open water. We're a long way from getting the boat out. There's the pontoon where we put it away. Yep. So, that's pretty much that done. That's a good job. Thank you all for watching. We'll catch you on the big job. Bye for now.